At this time, may I request that we rise for the academic procession.
Chancellor, the Honorable Justice Lexham Party, Chairperson of the Rhodes University Council, Mr. Vuyo Katla, and other members of Council, President of the Rhodes University Convocation, Professor Emeritus Peter Mtuza, the University Public Auditor, Distinguished Professor Paul Malam, our honorary graduate, Professor Pumla Gobodo Matigizela, Deputy Vice Chancellors, Deans, Registrar, Heads of Academic Departments and Directors of Administrative Divisions, Academic and Support Staff Colleagues, President and other members of the Student Representative Council, proud parents, guardians, siblings, and friends of our graduates, honored guests, and most important, our graduates. This is a day of joy. This is a day of celebration. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to the fifth of six graduation ceremonies of 2019 at Rhodes University. Over the years, our university has become an institution of choice for the young people of the Oprah Winfrey Leadership Academy for Girls. This evening, we welcome Ms. Rebecca Sykes, the president of the Oprah Winfrey Charitable Foundation, who is here to share in the celebration of the graduation of the students who are beneficiaries of the generosity of Ms. Oprah Winfrey. Ms. Sykes, we are deeply honored to have you with us. Please do convey our profound gratitude and appreciation to Ms. Winfrey for the investment she has made in the future of our country. Graduation ceremonies are an important highlight in our university calendar. They afford us a special opportunity to recognize, honor, and celebrate the academic success and achievements of our new graduates. Graduation is a significant milestone which marks one of the most memorable experiences in the life of our graduates of any age. It marks the end and a new beginning. It is a culmination of many years of hard work and personal sacrifice, a celebration of a great personal accomplishment, a moment of joy and pride for parents and other family members, a time to reflect on the road traveled and to look forward to a future rich with promise. On behalf of our Chancellor, Council, and the entire Rhodes University community, I offer our warmest and proud congratulations to each one of you, our graduates, on your wonderful achievements. Let me extend our heartfelt congratulations to those graduates who are the first in their family to earn a university degree. Having been one myself, I know too well just what a proud and special moment this is for you. You have achieved what no one in your family has achieved. Hearty congratulations. Each one of you, our graduates, has your own unique story of hardships overcome as you made your way to this glorious day that we are celebrating this evening. You know what? You have pulled through. Well done and warm congratulations. Over the years that you have been at Rhodes University, you have been sustained by the unfaltering support, loving sacrifices and constant encouragement of your parents, guardians, siblings, friends and loved ones. This day belongs as much to you as it does to them. Never turn your back on them. 
Could you please give a warm round of applause to all the families and those who supported our students? Thank you. Thank you. The success and achievements we celebrate this evening attest to the dedicated and committed support of our academic staff, our tutors, our laboratory technicians, computer assistants, support and administrative staff. We also acknowledge with great gratitude the important role played by our cleaners, cooks, gardeners, janitorial staff, wardening staff, and student leaders in creating a rich and supportive intellectual, social, and physical environment for our students to develop, grow, and succeed in their intellectual endeavors. In our 2019 graduation ceremonies, we will also confer five honorary degrees on highly eminent individuals in recognition and celebration of their extraordinary lifetime achievements and contributions in a field of knowledge or scholarship, in public service, or in artistic creation. Their personal journeys and selfless service and sacrifices serve as an inspiration and an example worthy of emulation by all of us. These distinguished women and men are Professor Ian Scott, Professor Glenda Gray, Professor Emeritus George Ellis, and our honorary graduate of this evening, Professor Pumla Koboto Matigizela, and Chief Oyenike Okundai. In the six graduation ceremonies of 2019, a total of 2,321 students will receive their degrees and diplomas. Of these, 1,261, or 54%, are undergraduate bachelor's degrees, and 1,060, or 46%, are postgraduate degrees and diplomas. Of the 1,060 post-grad students, 230 will be receiving their master's degrees. Of the 2,321 graduates, 61% are women. And 19% are international students. This year we have produced 89 PhD graduates. The Faculty of Science has produced 38, the Faculty of Humanities 30, the Faculty of Education 16, the Faculty of Commerce 3, and the Faculty of Pharmacy 2. Our warm congratulations to all our faculty deans and to the heads of academic departments and all the support staff in our academic departments. Let me, for a moment, address myself to our graduates. You have received the best education from one of the finest universities. With your Rhodes University qualification, you can embrace the future with confidence, courage, and conviction. Not only do you carry light with you, you are the light of the world. May your light shine before others and dispel the darkness of ignorance, prejudice, greed, 
selfishness, cynicism, hatred, hopelessness, and despair. May you brighten the corner wherever you find yourself. And as Germany Kant suggests, let your light shine as an inspiration to humanity and be the reason someone believes in the goodness of people. Now that you have a qualification from this great university, you are able to make life choices and define what success, happiness, and fulfillment mean for you. Whatever choices you make in life, never elevate personal ambition or single-minded pursuit of material or financial gain above all else. There is no honor in the abuse of public trust for private or personal benefit. This is an important lesson that we all have to learn from the PIC Commission, which is chaired by our Chancellor. The new Gen Commission, of which our Chair of Council was a member, the State Capture Commission, and the Mohoro Commission. Never allow the lure of instant gratification or convenience cloud your good judgment. Whatever the future holds for you, always strive to be the best that you can possibly be. Always strive to live a life of virtue, a life of consequence. However you choose to define success, fulfillment, or happiness, never forget who you are or where you come from. Never forget those who have supported you, those who have stu stood with you every step of the way as you went through your ups and downs. However you choose to define success, happiness, or fulfillment for you, never fail to treat others with respect, kindness, and decency. In all that you do, may you be guided by the values of social justice, empathy, integrity, honesty, compassion, and human solidarity, always endeavoring to brighten the corner where you are. You have so much to offer the world. Never for a moment doubt your capacity to make a positive change in our society and never allow the fear of failure to drive you into the safety and placidity of inaction. When I became the Vice Chancellor of this fine university, I made a public commitment that we would make quality and transformative education accessible and affordable to any academically capable young person of our country regardless of their financial circumstances. Indeed, we must do all in our power to attract the best and the brightest from every section of our society and provide them with an opportunity to realize their hopes, dreams, and aspirations. In this regard, I humbly request you to help us honor this commitment by contributing generously to our annual fundraising campaign and in other initiatives that are aimed at making the learning experience we value so greatly here at Rhodes more available to all. As a graduate of this great university, you join a special community of our alumni, extraordinary women and men who are making remarkable contributions and leading change in many and diverse fields of human endeavor. We will expect no less from you. We welcome you to this special and ever-growing community with whom you share a deep affection for this great institution. We invite you to visit the alumni table in the foyer to receive your special graduation gift as a memento 
of this very special day. Today is a special day to cherish and remember. May you cherish your university experience and the privilege of an excellent education you have received from Rhodes University. May you cherish and treasure the bonds of friendship formed at Rhodes University and rooted in shared experiences and memories. And may these sustain you and last a lifetime. We wish you much success, happiness, and fulfillment in the years ahead. We know, we know, we know that you will play your part in making this world a better place for all of us and for generations to come as you brighten the corner where you are. For two of our highly esteemed colleagues, the 2019 graduation ceremonies are their last ones in which they will participate in their official capacities. Our Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academic and Student Affairs, Professor Chris Bowie, and our Public Auditor, Distinguished Professor Paul Malem, will relinquish their roles in the course of the year 2019. Both of them have served our university loyally and with great honor, dedication, and distinction for many years. On behalf of our Chancellor, Council and the entire Rhodes University community, we wish to convey to you both our heartfelt appreciation and deep gratitude for all that you have done for our university. Our university is much the better for the immense contribution that you have made over many years. And we wish you well in the next phase of your ever unfolding future. On this special day of celebration, let us pause and remember those students who were our graduates, classmates, and friends who died during the course of their studies. They too would have been graduating from Rhodes University this evening. Borrowing from a well-known comfort poem, so long as we live, they too shall live, for they are part of us and we remember them. To all of you, our graduates, Mazel Tov. Sante sana, Gyaliboha, Nyabonga, Gyaliboha, Inkom, Shukran, Merci Buku, Baya Danke, Tante Grazia, Obrigado. Thank you very much. How does one forgive a person who has committed acts so monstrous, so horrendous, as to be seemingly unforgivable? This is a question that has long troubled philosophers, theologians, psychologists, and others. And a question that has been addressed in profound ways by Professor Pumla Gabordo Maricazela. Working in the field of psychology, she probed the question in a very specific way by writing a study of Eugene de Kock, who had been sentenced to 212 years in jail for crimes against humanity, for carrying out, on behalf of the apartheid state, the torture and brutal killing of activists, crimes for which he was given the name Prime Evil. Professor Gabaldo Marigazela conducted 46 hours of interviews with de Kock in prison. 
and in the process discovered a desperate soul, but also a human being who was genuinely remorseful, a changed man who could be forgiven, a view that runs counter to Hannah Arendt's notion that some acts are so horrendous as to be unforgivable, for which no apology can be made. The resulting book on de Kock, entitled A Human Being Died That Night, has been widely acclaimed and translated into Dutch, German, Italian, and Korean. Professor Gaborda Marigazela currently holds the research chair in studies in historical trauma and transformation at Stellenbosch University. From early childhood, she herself experienced trauma and deprivation. Born in Cape Town's Langer Township, her parents instilled in her integrity, compassion, and a work ethic. But she also saw her parents enduring the oppression and humiliation of apartheid. At the age of five, during the 1960 Sharpeville crisis, she witnessed the horrors of police repression as popular protest spread to Lange. Many years later, recalling what she had seen, the image of a street covered in blood and bodies lined up like cattle in a slaughterhouse, a harrowing image for a five-year-old. There were perhaps two important formative influences during her school years at Inanda Seminary in Durban and Shawbury High School in Kumbu. First, joining the Black Consciousness Movement, and second, reading the memoirs of Nazi Holocaust survivors. Significant preparation for her later research. After graduating from Fort Hare, there followed a stint teaching at what was then the University of Transkei, now Walter Sisulu University. And there too, witnessing another traumatic event, the killing and mutilation of a man who had attempted to oust Bantu Halomisa as head of the Transkei government in a coup in 1990. With her knowledge and experience, she proceeded to serve from 1996 as the only trained psychologist on the Human Rights Violation Committee of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, TRC, playing an important role in organizing a community outreach program in the Western Cape, enabling victims and their family members to tell their stories and reveal their pain and anguish. There followed an academic career, first in the UCT psychology department, where she had obtained her PhD, then as senior research professor for trauma, forgiveness and reconciliation at the University of the Free State, and now a similar position at Stellenbosch. In the meantime, there has been a continuing personal engagement with victims of trauma. In 2006, for instance, traveling to Sierra Leone on a United Nations assignment and listening to women recount their experiences of brutal violation during the country's civil war. Then, two years later, during the xenophobic violence that flared up in South Africa, doing volunteer work in a shelter for displaced immigrants in Cape Town. All these experiences have led Pumla Gobodo Matikazela to focus on some key themes in her thinking and writing, trauma, traumatic memory, empathy, dialogue, forgiveness, reconciliation. She suggests that the study of trauma may have been too theoretical, herself preferring to hear personal stories and work with individual narratives, believing that victims need to articulate their traumatic experiences in order to unravel their own complex emotions. There is, too, her stress on empathy. A TRC experience led her to empathize with victims, but then came the more difficult challenge to empathize with perpetrators like de Kock. 
In this exploration, she draws out the relationship between empathy, Ubuntu, and inimba, an Isikosa word meaning umbilical cord. With empathy comes dialogue. Dialogue, she says, humanizes the dehumanized and confronts perpetrators with their inhumanity. Through dialogue, she continues, victims, as well as the greater society, come to recognize perpetrators who failed morally, whether through coercion, the perverted convictions of a warped mind, or fear. There can then follow forgiveness. For her, the decision to forgive can paradoxically elevate a victim to a position of strength as the one who holds the key to the perpetrator's wish for readmission into the human community. And with forgiveness comes the possibility of reconciliation. A number of awards have been bestowed on Pumla Gaboda Marikizela. The United States Christopher Award and the 2004 Alan Payton Award for her book on de Kock. Honored among 100 people who made a difference at the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center in Ohio in 2005. The Eleanor Roosevelt Medal in 2007. This honorary doctorate is her third Rhodes University award, having received in 2010 the university's Social Change Award for the contribu contribution made by leading psychologists to social change in South Africa. And in 2017, the distinguished Old Rhodian Award. This latter award tells us that this honorary doctorate will not be her first degree. It was exactly 34 years ago tomorrow, the 13th of April, 1985, that she graduated with a master's degree here on this stage. So three and a half decades later, we are proud to honor one of our most distinguished alumni, a scholar who has authored a number of books and numerous articles, who has made a significant contribution to the study of trauma through her deep concern to recover and interpret the stories of victims, who has bravely gone against the grain in her efforts to humanize perpetrators, and perhaps most of all, who conveys a message of hope in our violent, conflict-ridden society, a message telling us that with empathy, dialogue, forgiveness and reconciliation, it does not have to be like this. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to request you to confer on Pumla Gobodo Madikizela the degree of Doctor of Laws honoris causa. Thank you. Let me begin by congratulating all of you who are graduating this evening. I would also like to extend my warmest congratulations 
to their parents and extended family members present this evening. Your children have given you a special gift. Each of them will come up on stage and return to their seats, walking tall, treasured certificate in hand. It is a moment that makes the opening up of new horizons full of possibilities, of various roles that you will play as angels of change in these challenging times. It is a great honor for me to be in this room with you as you celebrate your special day. I am grateful to you, Professor Malam, and deeply touched by the very warm introduction you have prepared to be able to weave the fabric of my life, my professional life, in such a thoughtful manner fills my heart with deep gratitude. Thank you. Vice Chancellor, Dr. Cesar Mabizela, thank you so much for the honor you have bestowed on me by asking me to speak at this special ceremony. Above all, I am conscious of the acknowledgement that the members of the University Senate conferred upon me when they recognized my work as deserving of the honorary title of Doctor of Laws. I receive it with deep gratitude, fully aware at once of the honor and challenge that the title represents coming from this great university whose motto calls on its alumni to lead and to be the light that shines. This for me is a very special occasion. You have gathered from Professor Melan's remarks that I am no stranger to Rails University. 37 years ago, when I arrived as a mature master's student to study for my clinical psychology degree, having already practiced for a few years as a social worker in the rural region of Maluti, I soaked in the experience of being a student again and gained immeasurably from a range of experiences that were both painful and wonderful. It was the early 1980s, and especially in this region, a time of great upheaval that shook the very foundations of our lives. For many of my contemporaries, the issues were felt in deeply personal terms. Yet this was for me the university where I learned to question, to embrace contradictions, to think. When I graduated, it never occurred to me that I would return to the graduation stage to be honored in this special way and to be counted among the heirs of a great heritage of excellence that many colleagues before me have bestowed upon us. All of you who are gathered this evening, who are graduating today, are joining the ranks of many distinguished alumni of this university. The political time of your special event tonight is not very different from the graduation ceremonies of my generation. The only difference, a critical one, is that apartheid was declared by the international community a crime against humanity. You too are receiving your degrees at a time of extraordinary upheaval in our country and the world, created in large part by irresponsible leadership and the greed and runaway corruption that it has produced. Our country is haunted by this post-apartheid predicament. 
the brutality of corruption that has allowed the continuing exclusion of millions of South Africans from the full enjoyment of hard-worn rights that promised a better life for all. 25 years after the declaration of freedom in our country, perhaps it is time for us to name this theater of insidious violence in terms of its transgenerational consequences on the lives of millions of South Africans, a crime against humanity. As many of the young people we have encountered in our research with the Institute of Justice and Reconciliation on Transgenerational Trauma in Langa, Bonteval and, Bont and Worcester have described their experiences of quote-unquote freedom. It is for them a great time, a time of great betrayal. That's what they have told us. And so, I have mainly two messages for you this evening. First, go out there into this world of ours and take your place as leaders of stature and maintain your vigilance in raising your voices in matters of justice and fairness about important matters of principle. Play whatever role you will take on with the force of moral stature and with grace and dignity. At the same time, however, I hope you continue searching for that unique balance between your right to express outrage with reason and moral wisdom. Do not be afraid of even a little critical awareness of your views to interrogate your position more closely and to dare to transcend the, the comfort zone of your beliefs. Throughout the ages, universities have been important centers in our society for creating knowledge. In our South African context, they have also been centers of exclusion, of limited access. They have played a role in sustaining and perpetuating certain intellectual and academic cultures. My second message, therefore, is that for those of you who will be returning to conduct your research in postgraduate studies, or postdoctoral work, reclaim your right to be here. Throughout your scholarly pursuits, question accepted assumptions that have become enduring frameworks that force us to view the human condition from a specific perspective which limit our understanding of what's possible in human relationships in ways that do not take into account the unique lessons from our own contexts. The undergraduate years are a time of learning how great scholars have defined the world of knowledge production. Now it is your turn to go beyond these canons to venture into new intellectual frontiers and to establish a new legacy of knowledge production in the many fields of the humanities represented here this evening. Some of my own work has been about challenging accepted wisdoms about transformative possibilities in the aftermath of massive traumas. I have done so by returning time and again, not to the writings of great philosophers and religious or political theorists, but rather to the unique stories of people who themselves 
have gone through a season of darkness and despair from irreparable historical moments that have been illuminating for me and my work. The lessons from these historical moments show that it is possible to build a new vision of the post-colonial, one that is informed by, as Rwandans say, quote-unquote, homegrown ethics rooted in and productively informed by cultural practice. It is a vision espoused by, among others, Steve Biko himself, who implored us to return to our roots to find ways of reclaiming our sense of being human. I have just returned from a week in Rwanda with a small group of colleagues, listening, being deeply mindful and observing what it means to live with the memory of the devastation that befell that country at exactly the same time that ours was experiencing the birth of hope. In the past, I have also had the opportunity to participate in a workshop in which young Rwandans presented their research on various aspects of the post-genocide period in their country. It is amazing to me how young researchers and scholars in Rwanda are living the vision of decolonial epistemic engagement, using their own context to open up the space of new knowledge production. One of the studies discussed in the research workshop that was co-hosted by Ages Trust and the University of London's School of Oriental and African Studies was based on an encounter in a facilitated group process between a woman survivor of the genocide and one of the men who perpetrated this crime. The woman described the horrific scene of mass killing that she survived during the genocide in Rwanda. She then told the group that the last time she saw the man was in a church where he shot and killed families who had sought refuge in the church. And she says, his hands are full of blood of an incredible number of the Tutsi he killed in the church, unquote. He was like a killing machine. And I am sure he honestly does not know how many Tutsi he killed, she continued. Her testimony led to uncontrollable sobbing in the room. The man then crawled out of his chair and went to kneel in front of the woman, sobbing, expressing remorseful regret. The young researcher who was presenting this work explained that after some relative calm, the woman now standing next to the kneeling man extended her hand and helped him to get up. She then embraced him and told him that she did not want to think of him as a killing machine, but, quote, as a fellow human being and brother, unquote. According to Hippolyte, the name of the man who was presenting this work, the two of them then stood in an embrace with arms folded tight across each other's backs. This is recognition of the other that is bestowed not from a distance, but from a place of proximity to the other's life's world. It is an experience near, to paraphrase ego psychologist Heinz Kohut, it's an experience near that opens up the possibility of an embodied recognition that seeks to repair the brokenness of the other, because now it has become, it is like one's own brokenness. These are the experiences that open up opportunity for us to explore new avenues of critical inquiry. President Kagame of Rwanda said in a recent speech last week that Rwanda is, he said in this recent speech last week that Rwanda is showing that 
restoration of human bonds is possible on the continent of Africa. He said that Rwandans have been asked to put their emotions, as he said, in a box. But in reality, actually, this is not possible. And so this invocation is held at the same time as the annual national commemorative period of mourning. In other words, he's asking Rwandans to put their emotions in the box so that they can move on. It's a complicated ask to, a thing to ask victims of massive trauma. But what we observe there is that side by side this idea that people must hold their emotions for the sake of peace, there is also these annual commemorative events that happen for people to actually mourn. This is a radical approach to mourning trauma, and it plays out in ways that we do not have the time to explore it in this paper. A group of women we spoke to last week during our visit described it thus. During the period of commemoration, we want to connect with the loved ones that were killed. And at this time, we disengage from dialogue with the people who killed our loved ones. And then in response, because we asked the question, when does this end? And then the woman, one of the women explains that the disengagement lasts, and we, we, we lasts as long as the commemoration. In other words, it ends when the commemoration ends. This, these are her words. It ends when the commemoration ends and we reconnect again and concern ourselves with the project of rebuilding our community for the sake of a transformed society, for the sake of our children. And we could see the children playing outside, the children of perpetrators and the children of victims. Hannah Arendt wrote about the banality of evil as a condition that creates an impossibility. It's unbridgeable divide. You cannot apologize, it's not worth forgiving. You just can't breed, bring the language of reconciliation. Now, I was only about, I wasn't even 10 years old when this kind of outlook was popularized by Hannah Arendt, this idea of the banality of evil as a theme that illustrates the impossibility of people connecting. If the level of depravity that has been captured in this way, compellingly by her, then it should be possible that relationships that foster thoughtfulness and a sense of being human reproduce themselves in our relational world. This, I think, is what Bell Hooks implies when she writes that the struggle for social change in the aftermath of historical violence should not simply be about condemning dehumanization. Rather, it should also involve finding new ways of reclaiming our sense of being human. Black subjectivity, she writes, should be an oppositional worldview, a consciousness, an identity, a standpoint that exists not only as that struggle, which also opposes dehumanization, but as that movement which enables creative, expansive self-actualization. Unquote. The capacity to place ourselves in the position of an other who wants to re-enter the world of moral humanity is what she is referring to here. And James Baldwin crystallizes the inherent contradiction in this message when he says, to paraphrase, facing history does not mean that change will happen, but change cannot happen unless the painful past is faced. Thank you.
Mr Chancellor, I have the honour to request you to confer the degree of Bachelor of Social Science on the following candidates. Zoe McQueen Arendt. <laughs> Tulisa Baba. Non Pumalelo, Queen Elizabeth Barbelli. <laughs> Peter Alexander Bally. <laughs> Leila Badella. Lonwabo Bambata. Yeah. Jose Andrew Boyson. Yeah. Catherine Dominique Brunt. Tanya Sibakazi Burns Nhlamashi. Jodie Teresa Camp with distinction in organizational psychology. Carol Chikwana. Richard Senyo Yao Azaglo. <laughs> Tatenda Chakabuda. <laughs> Tatenda Anesu Chengeta. Tanaka Laureen Chikomba with distinction in organizational psychology. <laughs> Michelle Chikutu. Kudzasha Emily Chingono. <laughs> Kundai Wesley Chisali. <laughs> Charmaine Vimbai Chitambwe. Betty Kudzanai Chodewa. <laughs> Sipamanda Klingo. Kathira Kaylee Cockcroft. <laughs> Stephen Rex Comrie. <laughs> Hannah Craig.
Leon uh, Pumeza Leonora Hutu. Ayanda Nontokozo Dobegua with distinctions in psychology and in sociology. Chido Dangwa. Rosemary Faye de Brain. <laughs> Chanel Vanessa Camille de Croisy. <laughs> Jesse Latabo de Chergo. Annalisa Donielli. <laughs> Lorraine Lorato Marie Eden. Martha Fetch with distinctions in economics and organizational psychology. <laughs> Bulelwa Faya. <laughs> Kyle Fickhart. Caroline Rosefield. <laughs> Daniel Fouché with distinction in psychology. Wezizwe Sibusisiwe Geninza. Linda Mbali Bridget Hadebi. Cameron Spencer Heathfield. Jabalile Nicole Flongwani. Ashraf Jones. Yes, Ashraf! Emmanuel Mpatso Kadoweri. <laughs> Simukelo Kulile Kamanga. Tandile Colossa Kani. Yeah. 
Shane Petru Kis. Bradley Athol Kent. <laughs> Lebachang Zandile Kibani. This is Seaway Class. <laughs> Masia Marichomo and Wuli Kotu Ramopo. <laughs> Catherine Helena Kramer. Sharanjit Shailen Lala. Lungile Chiamo Lata. Hotso Mateo Lacuape. Sterling Andrew Leavesley. <laughs> Simpiwe Michelle Linda. <laughs> Kendall Margaret Lindsay White. Esichle Lupindo. <laughs> Tatenda Monashe Edward Machia with distinction in organizational psychology. Hello, Emmanuel Martina. <laughs> Anam Magwala. With distinction in organizational psychology. Zianda Makibeni. <laughs> Sia Manthi. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Mandakiana. <laughs> P 
Pamela Manhochua. Ntomba Zuko Mangele. Nyashad Zaeshi Albert Manhansva. Violet Mapondera. Neliswa Mahanda. Sibu Sisiwe Masikane. Tafatwa Leona Mataruka. Asavela Matira. Zanga Nomtandazo Matibe with distinction in organizational psychology. Blessing Matsilele. Sinovuyo Mayakiso with distinctions in sociology and in organizational psychology. Eric Anesu Mazodze. Clumisa Mazomba. Mulanga Mbedzi. Tabile Mhobele Mthunu. Leobona Ntlalo. Eric Eric Sipo Mawande May Sifanelwe Mini Lunga Holisa Mkutwana.
Sihle Rosemary Umkwazi. Kalaletso Blessing Morani. Katlejo Moloto with distinction in psychology. Vanashri Allison Moodley. Cabello Katlejo Koshime. Machlatsi Machlatsi Ivet Mosila Matsi Evelyn Motimele. Soletu Sitembiso Msikinya. <laughs> Fanny Patience Msimuko. Ungu Benyati. People, the names of all of these students are very important to me as their dean, to them as the students themselves, and to their families. By all means, celebrate. <laughs> but <laughs> in the interest of getting through the list, Nga Benyati Wilberforce Mchazi. Tino Tender Charles Mudiwa. <laughs> Rafilwe Mur uh, Murongwana. <laughs> Pelontle Ontletse Mvula. Renisa Naidu. Robin Leneve Naidu. Yeah. 
Supersichre Ndaba with distinction in drama. Valerie Nokokanya Ndlovu with distinctions in organizational psychology and in sociology. Sipo Ndovela. Nkhlantla Vukosi Nguenya. Zusipe Sitini Joy Nkala. Tolang Nkato. Sisonke Nkonki. Sebe Nondima. Paige Sarah Norman. Litaletu Haile Nholo. Silondiwe Nsele. Sikolile Ntombana with distinctions in industrial and economic sociology and in organizational psychology. Mbali Rose and Isiwe Ntuli. Gamuchirai Nyevedzenai with distinction in psychology. Apiwe Nondumiso Nzuza. Liesel Wusthazen. Parazzo Marcia Parazza with distinction in psychology. Sindesiwe <laughs> Angel Peta. Pila Pulula. <laughs> Lorna Pupuma. <laughs> 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 
Tiffany Edmarentia Randall. Kanyisa Roji. Tebojo Andile Sachikonye. Sharon Tanya Radzwa Sambaza. Zimkita Sani. Camojelo Coquetso Salowe. Grace Dimacazzo Senacoane. <laughs> Zanele Martha Shabangu. <laughs> Lindelwa Sharon Shakoane. Yambeko Tutakula Logic Shapope <laughs> Kennedy Kuzwayo Semango <laughs> Habiso Sobantu Asanda Sotewu. <laughs> Kerry Ann Stackpole with distinction in psychology. Zeka Asande Twala Simangele Nolotando Bongiwe Twala Rolani Realoboja Tlacula Clotlo Tlacania Lulibo Toto Caitlin Emily Underhill Angus William Michael Usher. <laughs> Megan Laura van Rensburg. <laughs> Nelisa Velapi. Nolu Babalo Vongo
<laughs> Donica Jasmine Walton with distinction in psychology. Vous y allez to wire. Shane, Lisa, hang on. Shane, Lisa Willard. Sesona Sipo Yedwa with distinction in organizational psychology. Zozuko Zatu. Vambai Tini Zingoni with distinction in industrial and economic sociology. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honour to request you to confer the degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honours on the following candidates. Tazib Akram. <laughs> Flavia Beata Balios with distinction in psychology. Liesl Blendorf. <laughs> Jody Blum. <laughs> Sharon Gretchen Blum. Simon Russell Blunn. <laughs> Upile Siatandwa Bongho with distinction in drama. <laughs> Tristan Martin Britz. Linda Noquezi Butelezi. <laughs> Cholwe Abigail Chioka. <laughs> Chelsea Ann Kutzer with distinction in music and musicology. Kai Ben Crampton. Richard John Damant. Zico Dana. Natasha Lorraine Dom with distinction in organizational psychology. <laughs> Lewis William Dwyer. <laughs> Michaela Aretha Phyllis.
Jared Matthew Futcher. Subusiso Gadla. Zuko Luyanda Hadavama. Eugene Tenashe Gumbo. Christopher Simon Hale. <laughs> Megan Harris with distinction in drama. Gemma May Hartley with distinction in political and international studies. Bongeka Tabile Chlope. Lungile Chlungwani. Kulu Mangho, Chris Jack. Charlene Angeline Jackson. Kanyasile Isabella Jamela. Sipasichle, January. Christopher Graham Johnson. Samantha Sue Johnson with distinction in psychology. Ayatandwa Ketse. Nyo Letoalo. Zizipo Ludidi. Shilatelo Mabasa. <laughs> Mojabeng Claire Mabatuana. <laughs> Daniel Louise McKay with distinction in classics. Gotlanamang Moloyesi Boipelo Madito with distinction in organizational psychology. <laughs> Yandisa Madlala.
Lungisa Nicola Madolo. Sandasiwe Sandra Mafalala. Keora Tile Rose Victoria Machlaula. Takane Maluleke. Tulani Trevor Mapasa with distinction in political and international studies. <laughs> Ziyanda Maseko. Sepakazi Tsianyane Senamile Mate. Mpo Kanya Notolo Matros. Chanel Julie Ann Meager with distinction in English. <laughs> Banati Mhoboka. <laughs> Avoyile Sesetu Mgudwa. Tabsile Nguili. <laughs> Nombalelo Mangaliso Nkize. <laughs> Zoyesile Nkonto. Nklantla Hansom Nkutle. <laughs> Isabel Moyer with distinction in linguistics and applied language studies. Donna Deneo Mokai. <laughs> Lechlogonolo Molokome. La sede molose. <laughs> Colofello Moloto. Simela Tuleka Msutu. Yeah. 
Tobile Mtetwa. Lelona Mhesibi. Tyler Nauman. Aidan Peter Nell. Hubeko Ngubo. Katrin, Katrin Newvote. Declan Mark Nish. Laura Jean Nish. Zondalela Njaba. Chumani Nquinti. Kavui Nsenduluka. Ntombi Zetu Nyakambi. Marshal Tito Nyaungwa. Right there. Kaylee Damita Peramal with distinction in English. Pila Vuiseka Paliso. Bokang Piri. Molela Calvin Shane Piri. Tobacco Nicholas Hollow Okay, I think I've got this. Adivaho Florence Ramaiti. Kaylee Jean Ramsey. Lerato Rachefola. Tyra Reddy with distinction in organizational psychology. Bryce Mark Rennie. Oops. 
Marjorie Namara Rugunda. <laughs> Sasha Lee Shafley, with distinction in German Studies, Linguistics and Applied Language Studies. Cholofelo Valerie Sepotokele with distinction in journalism and media studies. <laughs> Guinevere Philippa Shapiro with distinction in literary studies in English. Mpendulo Sipika. Amanda Sitole. Luto Siwani. Yolanda Sorgi. Uma Songelwa. <laughs> Simone Suta. <laughs> Benjamin William Maltino Sturgeon. James Nicholas Edwin Salter with distinction in Ancient Greek. <laughs> Tabile Temba. <laughs> Alexandra Susanna Thompson. Heather Amelia Fay Thorne with distinction in psychology. <laughs> Megan J. Vetch. <laughs> Kristen Brenda Walker. Lloyd Mutunga Wambua. <laughs> Courtney Jane Webster. <laughs> John Stephen Edward Wilson. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, I have the honour to request you to confer the degree of Master of Arts on the following candidates. The first is a sprightly 80 year old.
Who said education was wasted on the young? <laughs> and his name is David Martin Allison in anthropology. Tandi Bombi in Journalism and Media Studies with Distinction. <laughs> Jennifer Bryson in Drama with Distinction. Masimbulele Busso in Counseling Psychology. <laughs> Tatenda Chatikobo in Journalism and Media Studies. Nicole Cook in Psychology. Siamtanda <laughs> Iribagiza Dalinga in Literary Studies in English. Etione Ferreira in Journalism and Media Studies. Oriol Megan Friedemann in Literary Studies in English. <laughs> Kathy Colleen Gush in Journalism and Media Studies with Distinction. Colette Haman in Clinical Psychology with Distinction. <laughs> Yamini Kalyanaraman in Counseling Psychology. <laughs> Jennifer Lynn Katz in Linguistics and Applied Language Studies. Mojalefa Jeremiah Koloko in Political and International Studies. <laughs> Bryony Gwyneth Kramer in Clinical Psychology. <laughs> Siposetu Krutani in Clinical Psychology. Gina Florence Cuckard in Creative Writing with Distinction. <laughs> Bianca Levin in Journalism and Media Studies. <laughs> Nolwazi Fortunate Machi in Creative Writing. Nseri Makadi in Journalism and Media Studies.
Obakeng Tato Precious Mahali in Counseling Psychology. Tumelo Tabo Mashaba in Clinical Psychology. Joshua Matanzima in Anthropology with Distinction. Sibongile Matabesi in Psychology with distinction. Yeah. Dolly Yolanda Mataba in clinical psychology. Chlumela Palesa Mkabile in linguistics and applied language studies with distinction. Happy Mulalani in Journalism and Media Studies. <laughs> Ati Narotam in Drama. <laughs> Ayobalela Mhelwani in creative writing. Sandile Brian Ngidi in creative writing with a distinction. Throni Nshinga in sociology. Sanele Nshingana in African languages. Andre Jesus Nunez Lajos Berguera in creative writing with distinction. <laughs> Rituli Orlane in creative writing with distinction. Ona Letata Oteng in philosophy. <laughs> Noko Chirafatso Pela in journalism and media studies. <laughs> Pierre Perold in drama with distinction. Asanda Ranase in clinical psychology. <laughs> Babalwa Khesha in African languages with distinction. Okay. 
Georgia Robertson in counseling psychology. <laughs> Heather Lillian Robertson in journalism and media studies with distinction. <laughs> Brian Robson in clinical psychology. to Fadwa Irene Sachikonye in Development Studies. <laughs> Titi Shamiso and Sachikonye in Creative Writing with Distinction. <laughs> Sandile Nokai Saki in Creative Writing. Oren Glenn Snellgar in Clinical Psychology. Jordan Daniel Steer in Literary Studies in English with Distinction. Lizo Tsotsi in Clinical Psychology. <laughs> Francois Weick in History. Luke Robert Willits in Journalism and Media Studies with Distinction. <laughs> Come here. Mr. Chancellor. I have the honour to request you to confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. <laughs> on the following candidates. Ulandi Duplessis in Political and International Studies. The thesis analysed the post-1994 formation of the South African program of health governance with a specific focus on the reduction of the maternal mortality rate. It is analytically situated at the conjunction of feminist social science and, and Foucauldian governmentality studies, applying the latter in an original way and to a global southern context to provide an account of how health was made governable in South Africa through the gradual fusion of primary health care with neoliberal governmental techniques. Congratulations. <laughs> Jenny Bozina Dupree in literary studies in English. The thesis examines how contemporary women authored short stories from Africa depict queer sexualities and genders. It illustrates that the short story form has become the primary vehicle for queer representations by African women writers and is an important development in the growing body of queer literature by African writers. Using an intersectional lens, this thesis explores four main themes in this literary formation, history, family, religion, and the erotic. Congratulations.
Iyad Ali Mohammed Issa in Linguistics and Applied Language Studies. Spelling, and by extension reading and writing, poses huge challenges for learners, particularly when the language has a complex, infixing, morphological system and a deep orthography. Based on a detailed classification of spelling errors from 107 grade school Arabic learners in Jordan, this study presents a most exhaustive and encompassing account of the role of morphological awareness in reading writing. It suggests systematic incorporation of morphological patterns from early on in the curriculum. Congratulations. Joy Ifian Yechuku Joseph in French studies. On one hand, the study has demonstrated through literary writing how hegemonic and marginalized forms of masculinity are the dominant forms of masculinity in West Africa, having negative effects not only on women, but also on West African society in general. On the other hand, the study has integrated the analysis of social change with respect to the theory of stiwanism, that is, social transformation, including women in Africa. Congratulations. Vivian Ngoy Kayumba in French Studies. This research offers a literary analysis of the quest for identity from the perspective of four different African and Caribbean writers. Works analyzed maximize the description of necessary details aimed at creating various cultural effects in the mind of the reader. If the Francophone writers depict the truth, their truth, or what they believe to be the truth, the researcher has concluded that these writers have created a new truth in their works, a new tradition for the future. Congratulations. Bernard Kusana in history. This thesis examines the role of the state and non-governmental organizations in dealing with food security in the Mutari district, Zimbabwe, since the late 1940s. The author illustrates the contestations between the state and its rural people in terms of how to deal with periodic famine, issues of access to food, and sustainable rural development. Since the 1940s, successive political regimes have used food as a political weapon to bring the rural poor under control. This, the author argues, lays at the heart of the problem of food security in Zimbabwe. Congratulations. Carol Willer Leff in Literary Studies in English. Um, as a reassessment of the Afropolitan and of the flaneur, 
Left's thesis offers an analysis of 12 African and African diasporic novels set in cities that include Johannesburg, Cape Town, Lagos, London, Paris, and New York. By problematizing the binaries of local, global, national, transnational, black, white, slum, paradise, this thesis addresses issues of belonging or not belonging and gestures towards new ways of understanding what it means to be an African in the world. Congratulations. Chipo Lydia Munyuki in Political and International Studies. This, this timely study in the field of higher education studies, sexual violence and critical gender studies provides powerful new insights into female academics' experiences of sexual harassment at South African universities. The author weaves with exceptional skill her nuanced and theoretically sophisticated commentary on her participants' first-hand narratives. The thesis makes an important contribution to breaking the culture of silence surrounding the far-reaching organisational, personal and professional consequences of sexual harassment of women on South African university campuses. Congratulations. <laughs> Sorry about this. Here we go. <laughs> Tandakazi Njovani in Literary Studies in English. Ms Njovani's thesis examines the aesthetic issues that underpin representations of traumatised children in selected novels by contemporary West and Southern African writers. Her research constitutes an important contribution to current debates on the need to decolonize trauma theory since, rather than dismissing such theory as irrelevant, she establishes a dialogue between its normative Euro-American Euro terms and selected authors' representations of traumatized children's modes of survival in the post-colony. Congratulations, Tunda. <laughs> Sinazo Onela Nomsenge in Sociology. The overarching purpose of this study is to establish whether the activities and services offered by non-governmental organisations affiliated with the JAWSA Youth Hub improve the academic performance and retention of learners, as well as to expand knowledge on how the involvement of learners in NGO work themselves may contribute to their livelihood and or school performance. Congratulations, Sinatra. Craig John Patterson in history. <laughs> it's true. The thesis, uh, Mr. Sorry, Dr. Patterson's thesis examines almost Dr. Patterson uh, examines the development of a horse racing sport, Umdiaho Wamahashe, as it is practiced in the former Bantustans of the Eastern Cape. Using ethnographic, fragmented archival and oral sources, the author argues that horse racing is derived from a pre-colonial cattle racing tradition. 
A collusion of environmental pressures and colonial responses to them made the continuation of this tradition impossible. Horses came to take on a symbol set of masculine power and of growing up. Congratulations. Mvuzo Ponono in Journalism and Media Studies. This study examined why young black men in Jaws chose to ignore the mainstream media scandal about President Jacob Zuma's illicit use of tax money and still vote for the ANC in 2014. The, the study found that in a context of high inequality, the party is still seen as a vehicle for social development. Therefore, what seemed to be a dubious undertaking or a vote for racial solidarity was in fact a calculated decision suited to its context. Congratulations. Ian Zieberger in Linguistics and Applied Language Studies. The thesis analyzes the ways in which language is used in the Daily Sun to build readers' political knowledge. In it, the author develops innovative new tools of analysis, drawing on theories from linguistics and the sociology of education. The thesis finds that the newspaper's coverage may work to reinforce distrust in politicians and parties. By contrast, it recommends various initiatives to stimulate inclusive discussions on the country's political future. Congratulations. <laughs> Delta Mbonisi Sivalo in sociology. The thesis examines social accountability, citizen participation, and urban governance in the metropolitan center of Bulawayo in contemporary Zimbabwe. In recognizing the debilitating effects of excessive central state control over urban government in Zimbabwe, the thesis analyzes the conflictual relationships between Bulawayo City and the central state on the one hand, and the forms of political engagement between city authorities and citizens of Bulawayo on the other. Congratulations. Jade Smith in Linguistics and Applied Language Studies. The thesis investigates how South Africans are represented in the words and images of children's books distributed countrywide by the Nali Bali Reading for Enjoyment campaign. Although the characters' physical forms reflect a diverse population, the choices made by writers and illustrators convey attitudes that disempower female characters. The thesis follows the various levels of explicit and implicit meanings that are used to encourage the young reader to agree with these attitudes. Congratulations. I also confer degrees on those candidates named in the program who are in absentia. Please rise for the national anthem. Thank you. 
virtue of the authority vested in me, I constitute, <laughs> I dissolve this <laughs> congregation of Rhodes University. Thank you. Thank you.